update you guys at this year again. And as promised, we're going to take a closer look at a few of these more interesting items. Um, well, as you can see, we have the whole thing kind of spread out here. And I must say, it's quite an array of stuff. But for right now, we're going to take a closer look at both of the motherboards. And just because this one is on top, we'll start with it. Like I said in the last video, no, I can't remember the name. It's uh, MVDX9DR3-F-0. Not any idea what that means. This really doesn't matter. You know, th this really wasn't the board I wanted to begin with. I actually wanted an ASUS Z9PE-D16, but nobody has them in stock, and I, I still don't think they have any in stock. So went with this. I, I think we'll be okay. And let's start out here at the top. Move over here. As you can see here, it was checked by one Ed P. It really inspires confidence. On the very top here, we have these wonky looking cables. These are actually mini SAS to SATA. And I don't know what that is. I think this is for uh, management. It's, that's one of the big benefits of SAS versus SATA, is that you can tell um, like which drive is bad in an array, but that's because they're managed. And I think this is SFF8787 or something like that, whatever. I forget. And over here, we have some regular old plain vanilla red SATA cables, because as you may know, the C600 series chipsets, which there's at least two different ones, they are very, very similar to X79. It's not like the old generation of server boards where the 5500 and the 5520 were completely separate chipsets from the X58. They're all kind of similar this time around, which means that the X79's SATA limitation, 2 SATA 3, 4 SATA 2, is still present on this board, but the C606 boards do have SAS. So that means you get four SATA 2, and they were supposed to be SATA 3, and that really pissed me off. They're supposed to be SATA 3, but Intel continues to prove that they cannot make the storage portion, the 6 gigabit storage portion of their chipset work very well. So we get uh, the 12 SATA 2 and 2 SATA 3 on this board if you use both SAS cables and you use the onboard SATA. So we've got a bitch and manual here. Let's see if it's all in English. Yes, it is. That's good. All in English. We have our awesome driver disc. Uh, hopefully I don't have to use that. Maybe there's some RAID drivers or something on there. I don't know. Let me pull this back. And there she is. This is uh, actually an EATX board. Most of the other server boards are um, SSI EEB, SSI CEB. EEATX or SWTX, which are really weird size and they don't, they don't even fit in that, believe it or not. But this will fit no problem in any EATX board. So as you can see back here, we have our two back plates. It's plain Jane X79 style back plates. Oh, we have our back plane. Very, very exciting stuff right there. Not a whole lot of extras in here, but we don't need a lot of extras. Because this thing is all business. Crack this guy open and we'll throw all caution to the wind here. We'll just grab on and don't let go. Let's pull this guy out. I'm dropping shit. Okay, have a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So we have our two sets of. Uh, Four DIMM, two, two sets of four DIMM slots per CPU. And of course, this, this is quad channel, as long as you populate the right slots. And I guess we'll, we'll start uh, here at the back. These are the two SATA ports, or SAS ports rather, the little breakout cables. Plug into these. This, this crazy thing plugs right in there. And then you have your SATAs. And we have some fan headers here. God only knows what that is. Uh, another fan header, and here's the, uh, the X79 type SATA ports that we're all used to. Four SATA 2, two SATA 3. Yeah, just lovely. And somewhere on here, there's a uh, one of these headers is for the uh, 
chipset unlock key that Intel likes to sell. It basically just unlocks new features that are already in there, but Intel wants to charge you a little bit more for them. It's, it's one of these, somewhere around in here. I haven't really looked into it, so I don't know. And we have a vertical SATA, or a vertical USB riser. And uh, I don't really have any use for this, but there's a lot of professional style programs that require hardware keys in order to work. And this would be an ideal place to plug it in if it's USB, because then it's not sticking off the back, nobody can steal it very easily. So that's cool. And this is our uh, ever useful TPM port. I have no intention of using a TPM, but there it is. Some more jumpers, blah, 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 blah. I think this is for another serial port. And in case you haven't figured out already, this is very professionally oriented. There's no, there's no USB 3 or, you know, overclocking or any of that kind of fun stuff. But that's all right. And PCI Express arrangement, very simple. What you see is what you get. X16, 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 all PCIe 3, full, full lanes and then 3, X8, also PCI Express 3. And the reason we can have so many lanes without any stupid bridge chips or uh, NF200s or any of that kind of stuff is because each of these CPUs can deliver 40 PCI Express 3 lanes each. So they're, it, the lanes are all kind of spread out. And you can actually kind of tell if you follow these traces, they just kind of go all over the place. Some of them go here, some of them go here. So there's a ton of bandwidth here that we could use if we wanted to do like a Tesla, GPU compute kind of thing, or if we just want to have a bunch of super duper badass RAID cards or something else really high bandwidth, this is perfect for it. And this is uh, right here, the Nouveauton chipset. I think that's for the uh, either the integrated video or it has something to do with uh, IPMI uh, lights out management uh, faculties on this board. Coming around here, more fan headers. I'm kind of surprised there's as many of those as there are. Uh, but I guess that's a good thing for my situation anyway. And of course both of our uh, CPU slots here, real basic, um, uh, what do they the hell do they call them? The, the voltage things, <laughs> where the V-core and all that shit goes in. The name escapes me. Anyway, up here, 24 pin in a very strange spot, but you know, we are kind of space limited over here. So 24 pin here and then 1 8 pin per CPU, and the stickers say both 8 pins required for heavy load. I guess if you're running uh, like 150 watt or 135 watt E5 2690 or E5 2687W, you want to have both of those in so you can keep your CPUs well fed. But I'm just using the 2650s, and those are 95 watt um, TDPs, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. And coming around to the back plane here, real simple, we have our integrated VGA two Intel Gigabit Ethernet ports that are powered by the i350 uh, chipset, four USB 2s, this is our um, out-of-band management port, kind of like iDRAC or whatever HP's equivalent is. It allows you to turn the thing, turn the board on and off remotely and manage all that kind of stuff remotely. And we have a serial port here, which is ever useful. And wow, this is just a freaking buttload of fan headers on this board. I can't even believe it. A lot of fan headers, a lot of RAM slots, a lot of PCI Express slots, but that's really about it. You know, this is, this is lean and mean. So that should pretty much wrap up this portion. And I'm really looking forward to getting this guy into production and we can do some serious crunching. So I'll see you in just a little bit and we'll go over the more interesting MSI Big Bang.